What is up everybody, if you that don't know me, my name is Chris, AKA Mr. Grow It, and today I've got a harvest video for you. This is the final episode of season six. If you haven't seen the other episodes of season six, you may want to watch them first. I will link that playlist in the description section below. For my harvest videos, I like to go over each plant individually. We have nine plants, nine different strains to go over. This is a four foot by eight foot grow space. First, I'll quickly talk about the setup. For lighting, I used two Electric Sky ES300 LED grow lights by the Green Sunshine Company, and then one Solar System 1100 LED grow light by California Lightworks. Let me just make it clear that this was not a side-by-side -side comparison grow. I've gotten comments on past videos where people mentioned that plants on one side look bigger or better than the other side. I grew a variety of strains this round, all with different characteristics, so comparing them wouldn't be fair. All plants were in soil, in 5 gallon grow pots, and were fed nutrients by Blue Planet Nutrients. A complete list of nutrients and other equipment mentioned in this video will be in the description section below. Okay, now onto the plants. All of these plants are photo period plants and were veg for 55 days. Let's start with Pineapple Express by G13 Labs. Pineapple Express is a hybrid strain that was made famous from the movie Pineapple Express starring Seth Rogen and James Franco. What's it called? Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express. Yes, it's this thing like El Nino, this airflow that comes from Hawaii and Canada and it gets the dirt, mixes it in with the weed in a very special way. It's actually very scientific. I won't go into it right now, but I am the only guy in the whole city that has it. This one seemed to be more of an indica dominant as it stayed short and didn't stretch much when I flipped a flower. I topped it at the fifth node and then did some low stress training in order to widen the plant and even out the canopy. All plants were supported by a trellis net this round and I continued to tuck branches under the netting until about day 10 of flowering, so mid stretch phase. This resulted in the middle of this pineapple express plant having several dense golf ball sized buds. Super happy about that one and a bit surprised by the bud density. I thought this plant was going to be the smallest yielder out of all the plants, but I was wrong. Towards the end of flowering, this plant started to turn purple. Gorgeous. The breeder recommends 53 to 62 days in flower. This one was harvested on day 74, so I harvested much later than the breeder's recommendation. You'll notice as we continue to go through the plants that all of them were harvested later than what the breeder recommends. I used the breeder's recommendation as a guideline, but I used the color of the trichomes to determine when to harvest. I personally like to harvest when most of the trichomes are cloudy, with minimal amber trichomes. Here's what the buds look like once cured. Final dry weight was 119.7 grams. Pakistan Valley by World of Seeds. Pakistan Valley is a land race strain obtained from the Hindu Kush mountain range. It's 100% indica and it certainly showed it. It was a short plant with tight node spacing and big leaves. I topped this plant on the fifth node and then performed LST. After the plant had stopped stretching, it had 10 main colas. One of the buds that was closest to the center of the LED grow light encountered a bit of light bleaching, as you can see here. You can also see some of the tips of the buds are pointy instead of round like usual. This is foxtailing. Foxtailing is when buds start growing on top of each other to form little towers. There are various reasons that foxtailing occurs, but I know for this plant it was because of high heat. I live in a desert region and sometimes the temperature reaches close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. No bueno. Anyways, nothing major to worry about. These buds are still smokable, it just doesn't look pretty. As we continue the video, you'll see that several of the plants foxtailed. The breeder recommends 45 to 55 days in flower. This one was harvested on day 75. Here's what the buds look like once cured. Final dry weight for this plant was 109.8 grams. White Widow crossed with AK47 by Green Bud Seeds. The strain is an indica dominant hybrid. I topped it at the fifth node and then did LST. The plant had several colors that were under the grow lights hotspot, so light bleaching occurred in this plant as well. At the hotspot, for those of you who don't know, is a spot directly under the center of the grow light. This is where the density of photons emitted from the fixture is usually its highest. Light bleaching happens when buds get too much light. The bud turns from green to white. The part of the bud that has been bleached is often less potent and loses its smell. To avoid this, you can increase the light distance, or you can try rotating your plant on a daily basis. I wasn't able to rotate my plants this round since they were in a trellis net. Oh well. The breeder recommends 50 days in flower for this strain. I harvested the plant on day 76. Here's what the buds look like once cured.
final dry weight for this plant was 148.1 grams. Brisker OG by Square One Genetics. Brisker OG is a stretchy strain with long internodes, like a typical OG. I topped this plant at the third node and then did LST. The strain actually had slower bud growth for the first several weeks of flowering compared to the other strains that I grew this round. At one point I actually thought something may be wrong with it, but what was really happening was the buds were just densing out. The buds became so dense that the branches started flopping all over the place. I harvested several other plants in the room before harvesting this one, so the trellis nut became less stable. I added a tomato cage towards the end of flowering in order to help support. This pheno actually had a bit of purpling towards the end of flowering as well. The breeder recommends 63 to 70 days in flowering. This one was harvested on day 79. The plant then went through the drying process, which I'll quickly explain now. All plants this round, including this one, were dried in a 4 foot by 4 foot grow tent in darkness. The temperature averaged 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 21 degrees Celsius, and the relative humidity averaged 57%. It took about 7 days to dry. Here's what the buds look like once cured. Final dry weight on this plant was 126.3 grams. Titan's Breath by Square One Genetics. I'm glad I ran two strains from Square One Genetics. This one was my favorite plant out of them all. Titan's Breath is actually Peanut Butter Breath F2. I topped the plant on the fourth node and then did LST. Just like the Brisk OG, slower bud growth for the first several weeks of flowering, then it significantly picked up towards the end of flowering. This one was completely purple by the end of flowering, definitely the prettiest of them all. The breeder recommends 53 to 60 days in flower, this one was harvested on day 75. It took about 7 days to dry and then I trimmed it. I personally like to do a dry trim on all my plants, I know it's a debatable topic, but I feel like dry trimming is a bit faster. The leaves come off the branch with very little effort and the trimmers don't gunk up as much. Now I know there are people out there who hate dry trimming and will argue otherwise, but this is just my personal preference. Here's what the buds look like once cured. Final dry weight for this plant was 104.2 grams. Before moving on to the remaining plants, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. I release videos on a weekly basis and if you click the bell, you'll be notified when I release a new video. Done? Alright, back to the video. Sour Diesel by Reserva Pravada. This sour diesel plant was a complete disappointment. It was doomed from almost the beginning, but I did grow her out until harvest. Early in veg, I started seeing excessively dark green leaves and curling, both are signs of nitrogen and toxicity. At that point I hadn't fed in any nutrients and it was only using up the original nutrients in the soil, Fox Farm Ocean Force soil. I've never had a plant react like this using Fox Farm soil and I've been using it for nearly 10 years. So then, genetics? I did find some reviews on the internet and people were not happy with these genetics as well. The strain is a hit or miss I guess. Anyways, you can see this plant was a light feeder. I had to flush her a few times throughout the grow, and she kept showing signs of nitrogen toxicity even when reducing the nutrient dose to a quarter strength. At one point she appeared to be re-vegging, she wouldn't stop stretching. A real small, airy bud structure which I know from past experience is due to too much nitrogen while in flowering stage. The breeder recommends 70 days in flower, I ran this one to the ground until day 90. I didn't have to trim this plant, I just chopped it up, bagged it, and put it in the freezer. Didn't even weigh it. I'll be using this entire plant for edibles. Lemon Skunk by DNA Genetics This lemon skunk plant was easy to train. I topped it at the fourth node and then did LST. Super sticky buds that were flopping all over the place late in flower due to the weight. Luckily I had the trellis net for support or else these branches would have been flopping over to the floor. This plant actually encountered a bit of calcium deficiency late in flowering, but she did seem to recover once I increased the doses of CalMag. The breeder recommends 57 to 63 days in flower. This one was harvested on day 72. After drying and trimming, the buds of course went through the curing process. My curing process consists of putting the buds in airtight containers and storing them in a dark place that's room temperature. For the first few weeks of curing, I'll burp the containers one to two times a day. Burping is simply opening the container and shaking around the buds for a few seconds. I also make sure none of the buds are sticking together when I do this. I also place a humidity monitor in the jar and I aim for 62% relative humidity. After a few weeks of burping one to two times a day, I burp one to two times a week. After one month, I burp once every one to two weeks. Here's what the buds look like once cured. Final dry weight was 128.8 grams. Hit Girl by Jinx Proof Genetics. Hit Girl Foxtail the worst out of them all. I grew the strain out last round and it did the same exact thing. 
I know that some genetics naturally foxtail. I'm not sure if this is one of those strains or if both of the plants that I grew foxtail due to the high temperature. I topped it at this third node and then did LST. She was very stretchy and she was a very heavy feeder. She stretched close to 20 inches past the layer of the trellis net and started to flop over a latent flowering since her buds were so heavy. I added some stakes latent flowering to support. The breeder recommends 56 to 63 days in flower, but the plant was nowhere near done at that time. The hit girl plant that I grew out last round I harvested on day 80. This hit girl plant from this round was harvested on day 90, so both way past the breeder's recommendation. Here's what the buds look like once cured. Not a very dense bud structure with this strain unfortunately. Final dry weight was 167.4 grams. Cotton candy by delicious seeds. An early veg I could tell this plant was going to be a big yielder. I topped it at its fifth node and then did LST. This plant had lots of tops. She started yellowing out mid flowering, but bounced back to green with the heavier feeding. So I'd say this one was a heavy feeder. Just like some of the other big plants in this run, several branches flopped over due to the weight of the buds. The breeder recommends 63 to 72 days in flower. This plant was harvested on day 77. Here's what the buds look like once cured. Final dry weight was 164.9 grams. Overall, I am happy with the result. Total dry yield for all plants was 2.4 pounds. I didn't cut the sour diesel plant since I'm using that plant like I use trim, and I don't count trim in the yield either, of course. Some of you may ask about the gram per watt, but that calculation doesn't make sense in my opinion since there were variables in this run, so I didn't calculate it. Big thanks to Anthony K, Game of Clones, and Happy Hydro, who are the newest supporters on my new Patreon page. For those of you who don't know, Patreon is a platform that allows you to support creators, and you get a little something extra in return for doing so. I'm currently working on a complete Phenol Hunt Grow series exclusively for my Patreon supporters. I'll leave a link to my Patreon page in the description section below. Also in the description section will be a link to my Beginner Grow book and How to Grow course. That's pretty much it for this video guys, if you enjoyed it please click that thumbs up and I will leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, peace.